Okay, Philips Silicon PL3. James? Yep, we what have. What have we got? We, I first, I saw this actually late last year um, on the road show and, and it looked pretty cool and, and it's out now, it's sort of, um, it's in production. Basically, it's, if you think of it as, as a Fresnel, it's designed as a theatrical fixture. Um, uh, little things like the fans in the back of the unit are sort of tilted inwards rather than outwards so that uh, there's less noise. Um, even when it's running, the fans aren't particularly loud or noticeable, and by the time you put it in a rig, it's not an issue. Okay, uh, give me the meat and potatoes. We're talking about emulating a Fresnel using LEDs. Yeah. What? Which Fresnel? It's physically about the size of a 1K Fresnel. Yeah, look, I, I think a 1K is probably not an unfair comparison. Um, we, we fired this up next to next to our 800-watt benchmarking redhead. Um, and look, at full wide, it, it's probably... It's probably not quite the same sort of punch. So how wide is wide? Okay, wide on this is 55 degrees, which is pretty wide. Yeah, that's and, good. And narrow is 15 degrees. Right, so we're talking spot right out. Yeah, it's it's really versatile in, okay. in the and, way... And that, that focus, if we want to call it the beam spread, yep. that's um, where do we wind it, how do we operate it? You can do it remotely via DMX. Okay, you can do it so on the side. There's actually, if we look on the side of the unit, there's, um, there's a really good little control panel here which gives you lots of options. But there, yeah, you got lots of preset color options. You can manually get in and adjust the focus really quickly. It's quite easy to operate. There is also an option for remote pan and tilt. Now That'd they're not, they're not yeah. The important thing to remember about that, as I said, this is designed for theater. It's not, it's not a moving light. So the pan and tilt is not indexable. Oh, right. So it's designed as a positioning you'd, you'd focus tool. It. You'd yeah, go you'd up, down, it, up, you'd left, right. You use it. You use it to focus your without fixture. going up there. So, okay, we've got that benefit. We've of course got the fact that it's running cold. You know, I'm still getting over this. It'll probably take another four years before I get over LEDs being a consuming not much power. I mean, this is three times one twenty watts, which is three hundred and sixty. Hey, I can add up. Um, so that's a third of a thousand watts with no heat. And the engines are rated for notionally, I, I was told four years. It's a long something time. Like it's a long four time. There's actually years. interesting point about the engines. It's actually the same light engines as in the very light VLX. Oh, but they use seven. They've got seven of them, and, and they run them a bit hotter. And then the PL1 from Silicon is, is single engine. So PL3, yeah, three, three engines. The PL1's really cute. It's sort of like the architectural version of this. So mm. it's the kind of thing that's going to go really well in galleries and places where... Uh, obviously, you don't want a thousand watts of light bearing down on your four hundred thousand yeah. year old Van Gogh. Right. Talk about colours. Colours. About colours. Of colours. It's an RGBW yep. system. Yep. And you've got uh, you've got different colour temperatures, which can all be recalled off the side. Um, it's easy to control over DMX. It, it's a re it's a really nice fixture. It's it's also it's made out of plastic, um, which. You said it's going to take you a while to get over the whole LED thing. It's going to take me a while to get over plastic um, lights. Just go back to colours, because if it's the very light system, then it's the very light colour engine. Yeah. Um, and right now we've got a really deep saturated blue dialed up. Mm. Um, how does it go across the spectrum? Um, it's it's good. And, and the thing about that particular engine is that it's got a very high... Uh, CRI or color rendering index, so it's mm. it's going to give you accurate rendition of colors if you're using it to produce white light. So the amount of control this gives a designer is phenomenal. If you think about it, it's up there, it's in your roof, in your rig, wherever. You're dialing up colors. You're not running around going, "Quick, buy some more Lee gel, <laughs> stick it in a frame, go and stick the frame in," and then it starts to burn out. You know. Yeah, forget the gel changes. What a, what a radical world! And what a radical world. Yeah, I mean, you, you're going to have obviously all your power and safety and aircon um, benefits that are associated with it. Cost We've benefit. Got same, the same um, plastic yoke as you'll find on the, the SPX, yep. um, which is good. And the lock on this is nice. Like, this is just sort of sitting with majority of its weight on the hook, and it doesn't seem to be bothered. Um, again, uh, nice sort of silicon touch is the integrated safety wire, and it's actually a decent safety wire. It's not just. Not an indecent you know, one. It's not a thing you use to yeah. tie up the petrol hour. Um, I'm here to tell you, it's the same weight as a 1K Fresnel, and, and mm. I love that. Mm. Daisy Chain DMX. Daisy Chain DMX. Yeah. Away um, we go. PowerCon input. Mm. Yeah, look, I, I think it's a winner. Awesome. I think it's going to go places. Cheers.